Hey guys, welcome to Off Camber. Today we're going to be talking about a full air system on your off-road vehicle or overland vehicle. And we're going to discuss what you need, what you don't need, which is probably some of this stuff. And hopefully you guys can make the right decision on, you know, what to get for your vehicle. We're going to be comparing a Dobinson and a Safari snorkel. There's other options out there that we'll discuss. So hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so first we're going to discuss why I felt I needed some of this stuff. That's my Forerunner over there that is supercharged and is in various stages of a rebuild process. And that's my wife's Forerunner over here that you could barely see on the screen, which is not supercharged. And with that vehicle, for example, you know, the last trip I did on it was about a seven or eight day Baja trip. By day three, I have dust going past the stock filter into the engine because I took it off and I saw. By day, well actually, the day that I got off that trip, I got on the highway going 80, either 7th or 8th day, after about five, 600 miles in the desert. And um, you feel the engine struggling, you feel it clunking, you know it's not getting enough air, you know it's not happy. So. If you feel that, you definitely need to do something about it. I felt like I needed to do something about it. And you really have two options. Option number one is you start upgrading stuff. Option number two is you maintain your filter. And you don't need any of the stuff to maintain your filter. All you need to do is, you know, if you're out there for more than two or three days, every other day, look at your filter, blow it out, possibly carry a spare filter or two if you're gonna be out there for a while, replace it, and you're good to go. You don't need any of this. But if you're doing, you know, week-long trips once a month, eventually it gets tiring. It gets very, very tiring to constantly having to, you know, check this, check that, and maintain everything on your vehicle. So you want to build it as bulletproof as possible. So when you're out there on the trail, you could just enjoy the trail. And that's why I went this route. So the first thing I want to discuss is probably the biggest reason you guys are here, the snorkels. <clears throat> this is a Dobinson. This is a Safari ARB snorkel. How this, how I ended up having two here is I ordered a Safari for my wife, installed it, I was happy with it, and everything on the forum told me that these are basically the same. I'm like, okay, screw it, I'll get a Dobinson, it's much cheaper, if I remember correctly, and um, I could, you know, really see the difference for myself. When I got the Dobinson and I saw the difference, I said, I'm not going to waste my time putting this on my vehicle, I'm going to get a Safari, and I ended up having... I ended up ordering another Safari, and now I have a Dobinson, which I'll probably do a giveaway after this video on my Instagram. <clears throat> Before I go into the differences of these snorkels, um, I'll tell you my experience with snorkels and why I really don't like snorkels and would prefer to avoid them if I could. But I can't. So I find that snorkels are installed for four reasons, right? The first reason is going to be for water crossings, of course. And that's when I got into snorkels you know, a decade and a half ago, because I used to live on the East Coast and do a lot of mudding. So, <clears throat> can't get away with it. You need a snorkel for water crossings. Most snorkels will do. You can build your own out of some Home Depot parts and it'll work perfect for water crossings. Second reason for a snorkel is dust. And that's kind of the reason why I'm going with a snorkel on these vehicles, more than water crossings even, is dust. And <clears throat> you want to try to avoid dust. The higher up your intake is, the the less likely heavy or more dust particles will go get kicked up that high. They usually settle a little bit lower and you'll have a little bit more longevity from your filter. Um, going back to water crossings for a bit, we also end up doing a lot of trails nowadays that there's very little, if any, information on them online. So we do constantly worry that we're gonna hit dead ends or something that's gonna stop us. And that's another reason we installed snorkels is because if we hit a stream or something that, you know, we didn't know how deep it was because there was no beta online, you know, with a snorkel, we're much more likely to get past that obstacle. The third reason people install, uh, install snorkels is looks. And I think both these snorkels look ugly, to be honest with you. They stick out, they bulge out a lot. Um, there's a reason for it, I'm assuming the airflow, but they are not good looking things, at least not on foreigners. I don't know about other vehicles. 
So, I mean, but that's a personal preference, right? There are better looking snorkels out there. And the reason why I don't use the better looking snorkels is because I don't trust that they have done any airflow testing, number one. Um, number two, I could just tell based on how small they are that they're gonna be limiting airflow to your engine and you're probably hurting your vehicle more than making it better, improving it. Um, and then the fourth reason people install snorkels, which I don't agree with, but I may be wrong, I am biased here and I'll tell you why in a second, is they say you get colder air on top at highway speeds and that, that's better for your engine and blah, blah, blah. Um, my personal experience is that about uh, over a decade ago, I had a company reach out to me, a very you know, well-known company, and they wanted to test a supercharger on my vehicle that had a snorkel. It was not a safari snorkel, that's all I'll say. And within, you know, during a testing period, they noticed that I am getting less horsepower than I should be, from at, at, specifically at highway speeds. Um, on the dyno, it was working perfect. But once we got on the highway, it wasn't performing as expected. And they ended up taking my snorkel head, drilling six, six holes in the back. And by drilling six holes in the back, when I was going above 70, 80 miles an hour, I was now getting this, the horsepower they expected me to be getting, which I guess being the airflow, which told me specifically that after a certain speed with a certain head design, the air wants to go around it and not into it. And the only way you force it into it is by drilling holes in the back, which is not something I really like doing, nor am I going to do. But that tells me that I don't, I can't, I personally am biased and don't fully trust snorkel designs, especially, you know, getting better horsepower, miles per gallon, whatever, at highway speeds. Might be accurate, but I think it also depends on how fast you're going and there's a lot of other parameters there. So therefore, the whole argument, to me at least, that a snorkel is going to give you better performance on the highway, I am going to say I don't, I don't buy it. <clears throat> so that's kind of my whole thing about snorkels. We'll, get this, we'll discuss how I avoid that, those issues that I personally see at least later. Um, as far as the Safari and ARB, what I noticed is a couple of things. The first thing I noticed is build quality. Safari, I can tell you for a fact, is using a better plastic. I don't know what it is, but you could visually see it, and on the inside you feel it, that it's smooth, versus the Dobinson is not smooth, so the production is not, you know, cleaning it up as nice, is not, you know, doing whatever it needs to do to make it look as nice. The, see, the seams, all the seams on the Safari, they look, you know, like very well machined seams. I don't know how you machine seams with plastic, but it looks like a, the molding process is done very, very nice. The Dobinson, all the seams look like crap. I mean, straight up, they do. And you could really see that on the head, <clears throat> which makes me really trust the Dobinson much less for longevity. Um, the inserts here on the Dobinson, they look like I could strip those with very little pressure, to be honest with you. Not gonna, because I'm gonna give this to somebody, but they look like it's very low-end metal that's being used here versus the Dobinson looks like it's high-end brass being used. Um, I'm sorry, not the, the Safari looks like it's high-end brass being used. But otherwise, it looks like they copied each other up to this specific point right here it looks like they were copied off each other somebody copied the other guy because the design is basically the same everything is exactly the same as far as the you know all the curvature and all that the difference really comes in at the head the head becomes different um for, with two different issues number one is the dobinson is about about two inches shorter um that's not an issue for you know if you install the snorkel and you're done. But if you decide to install a pre-cleaner on top of your snorkel, I notice that a lot of people with the Dobinson have to notch the pre-cleaner to clear the A-pillar. Whereas with the Safari, you don't have to notch the pre-cleaner to uh, clear the A-pillar. And I know some people don't have to do it, but some do. I'm not sure exactly why, because they're buying the same exact product on uh, the same exact vehicle. And I've seen people have to do it and not have to do it. But either way, the pre-cleaner pre with me on a two inch taller head, about a two inch, inch and a half taller head, um, clears by about half an inch from the pillar. Uh, so I'm assuming with the Dobinson, if I clear it, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be a millimeter. Um, so I'd still notch it anyways, just to not cause, uh, the, when it vibrates, not cause you know damage to my A pillar with the paint rubbing off. 
The other major issue, and really the biggest reason why I wouldn't touch a Dobinson, is the intake. So on the, this is the, in, the inside intake is exactly three inches. On a Safari, this section is three and a half inches. <clears throat> the truth is three inches may be enough, but I'm not sure. Um, and I'm gonna trust that Safari made a three and a half inches for a, perp for a reason. And the fact that I am supercharged here, I may potentially get supercharged here. I want to have as much possibility for airflow as possible. So therefore, I chose Safari for that purpose. And this little head and take head over here, Safari's is bigger than Dobinson, and looks like it's higher quality. But bigger is, you know, that's what I wanted to choose. So that's everything as far as the snorkels are concerned. Next thing I'll discuss is the Cyclone pre-cleaners. With these guys, <clears throat> Instagram really hyped these things up, at least what I saw. It really hyped these things up. And I kind of thought it was the shit for a second. And I ended up buying two just to test them out. One is a 9001 model, one is a 9001R model. One is made for a supercharger, one is made for a non-supercharger. Those are important to not mess up. Um, and it's very simple, there's just a fan in here. And when you put this on, air now is just coming in from, so it's like this and air is being forced in like, you know, while it's flowing by, being forced up. So the first issue that I think is gonna happen, actually I know, because I tested it. At 80 miles an hour, to me, it feels like this is sucking in more air than the head is. And again, I have nothing to test it with, so I might be biased, but that's what it feels like to me. The second thing is that the way people talk about this and say it's gold, it stops, it blocks everything, blah, blah, that's BS. I tested it and this blocks maybe at most five to 10%. And then I really read the fine print on the website and the website says it's not meant to block fine particles. The problem is up at that height, the only thing you're really getting and the only thing that you're worried about getting in your filter and going into your engine is fine particles. This isn't blocking. And they'll tell you straight up it's not blocking it. It's meant to block larger particles, pebbles. How often do you get peb pebbles in your filter? I don't rarely, I rarely see pebbles in my filter or ever. So the purpose of what this is supposed to block, I really don't even care about because I don't get those issues or I haven't seen those issues. And therefore it's not really that useful. Um, I don't even like the way it looks on top of my snorkel so I rarely 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 use this one other thing I'll mention is that if you go for an aftermarket box whether you make it yourself or what there's a chance that inside that box there's minor minor noises like little whistling noises that are being made just because the airflow is hitting little plastic tabs and things and various little noises are being made you won't hear them you won't hear them out of your snorkel when this is on your snorkel and the fan is spinning like crazy you, it's gonna magnify those noises and you will actually hear those noises. And it, you know, initially when I heard that, I thought this was making the noise, the pre-cleaner. And I posted on my Instagram, I got a lot of feedback. A lot of people get those, that noise and complain about that noise. But then when I did some more experimenting, it's not the pre-cleaner making the noise, it just you know magnifies substantially that noise. Keep that in mind. Not a big deal to me, but something else to keep in mind. Do I actually use these? Yes, um, maybe it's more psychological, maybe it actually helps. I think it probably helps five, 10% because what this does is basically there's a fan inside, spins really fast and whatever's heavy enough gets thrown out the back exit port here and everything else goes down into the filter anyways. And every so often I'd stop, I'd see how much dust I have been you know, covering the plastic here because the more dust I have here, that means that it's actually working and I rarely see dust here. But I think it works maybe five, 10% of the small particles. Therefore, if I'm on a, you know, two day trip, I'm not putting this on. Two day trip, my filter will handle. I don't even need the snorkel. Uh, four or five day trip, my filter and my snorkel will handle to get me back home without causing dust to go through the filter into my engine. But a five plus day trip, this will give me about 10% more life before I have to start cleaning my filter. So I'll actually put this on, on five plus day trips. That's how I use this. And that's only five plus day trips in the desert. That's basically how I use this. Okay, so the next thing I wanna discuss is the filter box. You could use stock. Um, you don't need to upgrade it. 
On the RGX 460 2022, we're putting a snorkel on, but we're not putting a box on yet. The filter looks bigger than a foreigner, so it might be enough, I don't know. Only if we see that the filter doesn't perform well, we'll actually consider a box so we could use a different size and style of filter. Um, the box that, sh that I chose or that you know, you're gonna choose, it's gonna, really it should be depending on what kind of filters they offer for that box. So with AFE, I am happy with what they offer, these two filters. We'll discuss them in a second. The other very, very important thing for me with AFE, and I don't know if any other brand offers this, is first of all, they have a little bit of glass so you could see how dirty your filter is. If you seal everything here properly when you install it um, completely, including the drain plug, that's what I sealed, then this is watertight. However, I can open it up. And when I open it up, I get air through here. This re alleviates all my concerns about running with a snorkel only on the highway. I'm not a big fan of that. So we actually keep this box open until we go off-road. And once I hit dirt, I seal it up. I'm not going 80 miles an hour on dirt. I seal it up and now I have everything working as it should be with my filtration system. But on the highway, this is open. And I'm getting a little air from there, a little air from there. And I notice personally that my engine tends to run happier when this is open, when I'm going fast, you know? So that's something to consider as well with your box. That's why I'm a big fan of this specific box is because of this option. If other boxes have it, get any box you want. <clears throat> filter, same thing. I mean, you can get a super, super, super heavy duty tractor filter. Basically, that's what this is. Um, and it's gonna limit airflow. <laughs> so you could have, you know, spent God knows how much money on exhausts, on cold air intakes, on snorkels, on superchargers. But in the end, you're limiting your airflow with the filter. Um, that's why there's two filters. This filter is more for street use. It has only like three or five layers of filtration and it lets in a lot of air, which means it can let in more particles. So this is used on the street. When we are getting our vehicles ready to go for a long overlanding trip, this filter goes on. And this filter is gonna limit the airflow, but it's also gonna prevent a lot more particles from getting in. So that's kind of you know the way I run my setup. Up to you what you wanna do ton of options here. I'm kind of laid out my mindset as to how I built this. So hopefully you guys can make the right decision. Like I mentioned earlier, this is not cheap and it's probably not necessary for a lot of people out there. If I'm only doing weekend trips, I'd be more than comfortable with a stock filter. If I'm doing only one long trip a year, I wouldn't spend my money on any of this. I might get a snorkel for water crossings if that's the areas that I'm going to. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't bother you with a snorkel either. It's more reliability. <clears throat> the last thing I would say to consider before you make a plunge into a snorkel is actually two things, right? They stick out a lot, they bulge out. They bulge out as much as your side view mirror bulges out. So if you are on trails and you're swiping your side mirror sometimes, which I am, and either it's closing, I've actually, you know, ripped the plastic of the side mirror once on a trail, because the trails are so tight and our vehicles are so wide nowadays, you're gonna eventually cause damage with a snorkel. And eventually you're gonna be at a point where either you say screw it and you keep going forward and that snorkel is gonna start, is gonna most likely bend your entire fender and possibly your A-pillar, or you're gonna be backing out of a trail. I'm gonna go forward, but at least I could say that now. So now that I know that I know what I did to my vehicle and I know the possible future damage it may cause, but I'm willing to take that risk because I wanna prolong my engine use and not have to turn around at a water crossing one day in the future. That's number one. Number two is, um, they're not the prettiest things in the world, snorkels, to be honest with you. And you might think it's cool today and you might think it's ugly tomorrow, but the problem is you can't take it off tomorrow. You make a big hole in your fender, fender you could replace, but you're making holes in your pillar and your pillar is not as easily replaceable and it's gonna be very, very costly to fix those holes. So a snorkel is a pretty permanent, um, you know, s a accessory. Therefore, I, you know, think twice before you decide to make that um, jump into this accessory. Is this something that you're gonna, you know, is your vehicle really being purpose built for overlanding and for, you know, you plan on doing this for the next five, 10 years, or are you just getting into this and experimenting with it and you're not sure? Because if you're not sure, I wouldn't make this commitment yet to your vehicle. You know, you could potentially kill its resale value and or not be happy with it in a year or two. 
All right, thank you guys. Um, hope you liked the video. Like it, please. And I'll try to be posting more videos. Follow my IG at offcamber underscore. Have a good day.